Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing fantastic and that you're all having an incredible day. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. SoFi Bank, that is S O F I, a San Francisco based bank with 6.2 million customers apparently holds Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Cardano, Solana, as well as Dogecoin and ETC, which is Ethereum Classic, the bank revealed in a second quarter earnings report. So, this was z z z a quite popular news. I assume it has to do with the fact that the word bank and cryptocurrencies were in the same paragraph. Um, however, you know, here's a here's one to challenge your brain. This is probably happening across hundreds of banks within the United States at the exact same time. Yeah, crazy, right? Wow, who would have thought of that? So you know how like um, I told you like a while ago, like, and I mean, it is like literally basic knowledge. You remember all the banks and institutions and like all, you know, all these other places who were like, oh, we want to start selling and holding and custodying Bitcoin and Litecoin and Ethereum. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy. And then the prices dropped that day because prices never react to any good news. But then I was like, wait, how are you going to sell me Bitcoin and Ethereum and Litecoin, unless you are holding these coins yourself. Yes, 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 it is It is the most logical thing in the entire world. You cannot sell something that you do not already own. So we should, hmm, how do I say this? It is nice to see that there are banks out there who are actively in the cryptocurrency space. Uh, this news no longer surprises me because we've known that this has been happening for the last couple of years. There are literally hundreds of banks around the world that we've been told are getting into the cryptocurrency space. Uh, I'm not sure if the person who wrote this article was maybe from San Francisco. Maybe they want to move there. Maybe they like the idea of like the word SoFi. Like you can say it really quick, like, hey, hey SoFi, like it sounds maybe kind of cool or something. But this is, this should more likely be like everyday news. It's more of a matter of uh, we do not normally have explicit proof as to which banks are currently holding. Uh, but we've had news for a while that they're trying to get licenses, license size, which is the plural, uh, to be able to actually uh, hold cryptocurrencies them, them, themselves. They have $82 million worth of Bitcoin, $55 million worth of Ether, with Doge being the biggest at nearly $5 million, while Cardano is fourth at $4.5 Million. I would love to have a sit-down conversation with the head of SoFi Bank to ask, in all honesty, why Dogecoin is held more than Cardano. That's just more of a, of a personal feeling. I do believe at some point we are more than likely... Listen, if we're, if we're talking about Bitcoin is going to go from less than 30,000 to 50 to 70, to 150, to half a million dollars, I can totally see Dogecoin going from 7 cents to 50 cents, to 75 cents, to two or three dollars, maybe one or two more halvings. It seems all but likely if these coins continue rising in this way. But at the same exact time, I feel like personally Cardano is going to do more. I, I assume someone's typing furiously now in the comment section to tell me why. I, I, I feel like Cardano has more partnerships and they're more of a non meme coin as far as like we know that they're doing a lot of business in Latin America and in Africa. So I would use logic and just assume that Cardano would do better 
But I mean, we also have gotten to the point in reality and in the cryptocurrency space where nothing's actually making any kind of sense anymore. So for all we know, Dogecoin could hit $18 and Cardano could just go to seven and everyone's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I got dog, doggy coin. It says it allows you to invest part of every direct deposit into digital assets with no fee and even gives you 100 US dollars for signing up as a US customer. Wow, look at the benefits. That's absolutely crazy. Here's a chart right here showing the... um. The, the monies that they have, it, it, it appears that they have, or I guess, like seven main, eight main coins, and then everything else, it says all others. So maybe, they're, maybe they're also holding Tether. I'm not really sure. Uh, it started offering crypto in September 2019, around the end of the last bear market, when it had just 800,000 customers. They added almost as many as 584,000 new members just during the second quarter of this year alone. Uh, cool. Fan, fantastic. Um, I guess, you know, it's the news that there is explicitly a bank who is now doing this. We know that there are multiple banks who are doing it. But, but I, 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 sorry, <laughs> why did I scream like that? I, I feel like this is one of those moments where... <clears throat> You know it's happening, but when you like know it's happening, then it's something. Like we know that companies and corporations are buying up Bitcoin. But when you get like micro strategy news, it's like, oh, like like they tell you the exact number of of what they're doing within the cryptocurrency space. So cool. Um, all I can uh, muster up to say is in another uh, example of uh, there's a lot less than we thought already. Uh, this bank alone is holding $82 million worth of Bitcoin. I'm, I'm a very big advocate of making sure that everyone constantly knows this information because it just seems like we're, we're in this parallel paradox universe where everyone hears stuff and then no one like actually understands what's, you know, like it doesn't even go in one ear and out the other. It like it hits your earlobe and then kind of just falls to the floor in the idea of uh, there being eight billion people on the planet and i'd i'd say a fair number is maybe roughly around 150,000 companies i i that, that sounds correct it sounds roughly correct like not like the big conglomerates but just in general and also banks around the planet as well this is now one bank institution that's holding more bitcoin than Several hundreds or thousands of people will ever be able to hold. That is to say, if you are trying to acquire one Bitcoin. Um, I would love if sometime in the future we had more transparency from companies as to how much crypto they have. Just numbers for my sake so I knew exactly how much was off the board. But... As a company and you're collecting Bitcoin, you can't be like, hey, guys, we got 100 million worth of Bitcoin because it causes other people to also start buying as well. So I would understand them uh, not wanting to um, let people know what they got. That is the uh, SoFi Bank in San Francisco Co. is holding over a hundred million dollars worth of crypto. Um, hoping that that information has sunk in for everyone, so that we have no um stragglers during the next bull run. Uh, yeah, I, I mentioned a couple of days ago. You, some of you definitely saw it on 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 Twitter. I don't know if it's in the air. I don't know if it's uh like a mental thing. Like maybe maybe we are all psychically linked in some sort of way. There's some, you feel it, right? There's some type of like, um, almost like a sense of urgency when it, like, or at least for me and my friends group, uh, we've been discussing the last couple of days, like, I feel like I'm not doing enough. That's not to pressure you, but I feel like I'm not buying enough. I feel like I'm, uh, like I should really be hitting it hard before the wave really picks up steam. Uh, that was one of my issues before back in 2016, looking at the market going doop, 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 like not really doing anything. The market goes crazy in 2017 and I'm like, <gasps> I should have bought more. Same exact thing. And to be fair, 2020 was a bit of a cluster. So yeah, <laughs> I don't blame myself for not being uh, hyper focused on the crypto market when I was just trying to 
uh, to breathe. Um, and then I, I, I feel like I'm there now again. I feel like I'm at this point where I'm like, I know that stuff is going to go crazy. Why keep waiting when I could do more now? So I'm, you know, at this point where I'm like rapidly accumulating. But even then, that doesn't feel like enough. Like, I mean, but I'm also, I feel like I'm now, I, you know, tell me if I'm the only one. I'm seeing people posting stuff on on Twitter uh, about how much crypto they have. And this is a gigantic uh, finger wag. Uh, I implore you, I implore you to never tell anyone how much you have. I don't care who they are. I don't care if that's friends or family. This could be your best friend from when you were three and a half years old. I don't give a rat's behind. It is no one, unless you are actively going around telling every single person every single day how much you have in your bank account, that is no information for anyone to know. And this trend is starting up again. Like, remember years ago where all the, that cringe, where all the YouTubers were like, I'm going to show you how I make $122,000 per week. And I was like, why are you, sh like, and they would show their bank account. It, it, I, I find it very, very weird to be like that intrusive or what, anyway. Uh, but I'm seeing people like posting these things again on, on Twitter, like almost in mass, like everyone's showing how much they, it's impressive to look at. I won't lie. I sit there and I go, wow, that's a lot of monies. But then I also go like, like part of me feels like, I guess maybe it's just FOMO where like, I'm like, oh boy, I wish I also had that much kind of, but I don't know. So maybe this is uh, fueling me to start uh, pumping more into the market because I see other people doing it, which then, you know, anyway. That's the SoFi Bank in um, San um, Francisco. I almost said Crisco for some reason. Uh, owns cryptocurrencies over a hundred million dollars worth. Yeah. Let's move on. Also in yay. This was very popular news, and I feel like. It was news. In the rapidly evolving realm of cryptocurrency mining, Tether has made a significant stride towards redefining the Bitcoin mining landscape by introducing their own Bitcoin mining software. The primary goal of Tether's, they say, cutting edge software is to optimize mining capacity and improve overall operational efficiency revolutionizing the way mining farms are managed. This news was huge, and I don't think people uh, got it at first because I also saw it and I was like, wow, that's amazing. But then I realized uh, who it was actually for. The Tether development team is preparing to release a new JavaScript library Designed to interact with leading Bitcoin mining hardware, including What's Miner, wow, Avalon Miner, and Ant Miner. Those are names. These libraries, described as high quality, they described as high quality stuff. Those are the words they use in English. High quality stuff. Okay, super modular and highly polished by the CTO of Bitfinex. Promise to enhance the effectiveness and optimization of mining operations. Here's the tweet for it right here. As a core member contributor to Moria, so it's Maria with an O, Moria, an orchestration instrument by mining farms. Ardoino highlighted that Tether has embraced the innovative hole punch technology in its recent advancements, emphasizing its use in Moria. So anyway... Uh, this news was very popular because it was floating around that Tether had created a way to make it easier to be able to mine Bitcoin. And then your excitement kinds of go up. You're like, oh my gosh, I want to also mine Bitcoin because Bitcoin's Bitcoin. And then you realize that this is just for the largest companies and operators and like those who have hundreds of millions to have this infrastructure. It is now going to be like lightly easier and more polished for them to be able to effectively mine Bitcoin. Um, so this is cool news in that uh, we also recently had news. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, for those of you who weren't here in that video, we got um, some, some mathematicals that said uh, that if Bitcoin by the having is not 
one hundred thousand U.S. dollars. Um, apparently, it will be unprofitable for people who are mining it. The idea is. We know how much it costs to mine a Bitcoin depending on where you are in the world. And this is why more people are mining it because their cost to mine a Bitcoin is less than the price of Bitcoin. So they're always profiting from mining Bitcoin. However, if the price equals or goes above the price of Bitcoin, therefore it is no longer profitable. And this is why sometimes we see people unplugging their machines or we get that really like, it's supposed to be kind of scary news where everyone's like, oh my gosh, people are unplugging their machines. What's happening? And I'm like, okay, just calm down. Like, you know, the, the mining difficulty will readjust itself. That's how the network is meant to be. Uh, so yeah, this is only for corporations. This was uh, pushed around in the cryptocurrency space as if Tether had created something that you could literally have next to your computer and start mining Bitcoin. I mean, technically you can, but you will never actually uh, solve any of the equations to be able to like, you You can totally set up a, you know, a Bitcoin mining system uh, next to your computer unless you, what were the... There was someone, what was it? I think January or February, there was one machine somewhere that was not like interconnected to like a larger group of other machines. And they actually did win the reward. I think it was for like one and a half, like it, it, like it, 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 was, it was something insane, like a huge amount of, of money that they got at one time that, would ha that should have been mathematically impossible for them to actually get, but they got it. So if you're trying to, you know, test your luck, uh, and spend a whole bunch of money just looking at a screen that has generated no Bitcoin, you know. Anyway, that's the popular Tether mega efficient mining hole punch news. Fantastic. Yeah. Let's move on. Also in yay news... Japan just established a whole new level of clarity for their cryptocurrency taxes within the country. Up to this point, all unrealized gains from cryptocurrencies were subject to a 30% 30, 30 corporate tax rate, terrible. Though now it appears that this is coming to an end. The news came from Japan's National Tax Agency, or the NTA. The agency explained in their statement that crypto assets will be excluded from any company's asset valuation based on model value in certain conditions if they are met. For example, a company is required to hold crypto assets for certain periods of time after they're obtained if tax exemptions are to occur. Also, it's been stated that all crypto transfers are subject to specific regulations. Soto Watanabe, CEO of Web3 development firm Stake Technologies PTE, okay, believes the new taxation laws will open all kinds of doors for innovation within the country. And he thinks that this will do wonders in preventing Japanese crypto companies from leaving because someone invented the plane and people are getting onto them and going other places where they have better taxation. At the same time, he also says that the rules can be extended somewhat to ensure crypto firms in other regions also benefit. He stated, and I do quote, for the time being, people who want to do something can now do it without leaving the country. I would like to continue constructive discussions with politicians and authorities. Next, I would like to do something about the end of term taxation of holding tokens issued by other companies as a corporation, as it is a hindrance to the domestic expansion of projects and domestic projects, end quote. Uh, so this was also, and I'm not really sure why, like what's going on? Like what's, 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 the, what's, what's, the, what's the haps right now? This was also relatively, relatively popular news. Simply because it's taxation news. So anytime a country puts forth new taxation rules that are lightly beneficial to someone or something or a corporation or a group of people within the cryptocurrency space, people tend to like the, the generalized news. This news was pushed forward by a number of websites as a way that the 30% tax rate for uh, Japan no longer applies if you are holding crypto for a certain amount of time. Not for everyone. It is only for if you are a company or a corporation. 
So this is why this news was popular because people kept on seeing that crypto taxation within Japan had fallen down. And even then, I couldn't even find any numbers. Sorry for screaming. Even then, I couldn't find any numbers for exactly what the new taxation rate was going to be from the 30%. Is it 29? Is it 28%? Is it 5%? There's no actual numbers for, I mean, I maybe I, because I, I can't read uh, Japanese, you know, it's clearly somewhere, but I haven't seen it. Um, but this is, in essence, also good news in that they're uh, understanding that uh, companies can get up and leave. I know I say it as a joke a lot of times, but this is what they've been doing. Why do you think we keep seeing so much news about this company's getting up and moving to Germany? This company's going to Portugal. These companies are going to Dubai. There's like a constant sense of where all, like, remember, like, all the cryptocurrency exchanges keep saying that they're going to expand and move to other countries? Why is it always Dubai? Why is it always Singapore? You have, you're going to the places where you have, you know, the most, I want to say bang for your buck, but it's more of a tax for your truck, whatever saying is, is supposed to go there. But even, even then it's, it's more of a, uh, some of these taxation laws and rules are just so convoluted. It doesn't make a lot of sense as to why anyone, my opinion. Why anyone would still make sure, there's also, a, maybe we'll get to it, maybe. There's another news story here that I sat there and I was like, what? Like, I just didn't understand uh, why people would even think of still doing business in that place. But that's something else completely whole nother different topic. So I think this will be better for companies. But then also people can still just go somewhere else where like it benefits them so much more. The idea of a 30% tax rate is less than many other countries. But there are also countries that have openly stated you, you have 0% taxes if you do business here. Like you can't, you cannot beat the number zero. You literally, you can't, you, you can't. I mean, unless they go negative and then they start giving you money, but that's not, that's not ever going to be a thing. So yeah, Japan is going to have new tax laws. They're not going to apply to people. They're only going to apply to companies. In certain situations, if you've been holding a cryptocurrency for a certain amount of time, but apparently if you transfer or move that crypto, there's also taxes on top of it. Why? What year are we living in? Like, why is it? That's like someone, who, that's like you writing an email and then you getting charged for it. And then because your friend copy and pasted like a paragraph from it and then sent it to me, that's like another tax worthy thing. What, 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 are, what aren't these people getting? Like, what aren't, well, they're, they're going to get it. Like, that's usually, that, that's usually one of the biggest issues is we've seen over the years. And this is why companies keep leaving the U.S. Like, if you don't give it to them, and that is to say, like, rules and regulations and, like, fair taxation or just something that makes sense comparatively to other countries, it's like, what was that other thing that, uh, in, in, in France? Don't they have, like, whoa, 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 whoa. We read before that I think for crypto companies, they have, like, a 48% tax t t t taxation rate. What? Like, what? Why would why would I why why would I even think of doing business there? On, on what on what plane of existence would I even think about that? Anyway, that's the Japan taxation news. Oh boy, got myself riled up there. All right, let's move on. Also, in this was very popular news, and I. Constantly question reality. Binance has recently announced that they have been granted a full license to operate in El Salvador. This landmark event coincides with a rising acceptance of Bitcoin as legal tender within the nation. So imagine my surprise when one of the most popular news stories was that Binance got more paperwork. I you I it's impossible for me to make it up because it keeps happening all the time and I sit there and I'm like this is maybe just what people love. So often uh if a company is burning coins, creating coins, firing people, hiring people or getting a stack of paperwork, it ends up being one of the most popular news stories and once again I just, I just can't I just can't logically figure out uh why I get that it's um, uh, Binance and, you know, the, 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 the significance of El Salvador. 
But I'm, I won't lie to you. I'm actually a little shocked that it even took them this long to get the paperwork done because they're, they're Binance. In that, I feel like Binance should have already received paperwork two years ago from the country as they began to announce that Bitcoin would be legal tender because it would have only helped Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies within their country and also allowed more payments within... You understand what I'm saying? Like, I feel like if you want people to use Bitcoin and for money to flow to your country as El Salvador, as they're going to be using thermal energy to mine Bitcoin, would you not want Binance and Coinbase already there? I, I, I'm, I feel like I'm missing something. The exchange made history with this statement by being the first cryptocurrency exchange to be granted a license to operate in the country <clears throat> by the country's central bank and National Commission of Digital Assets. Here's the tweet for it right here. It says, Binance is pleased to announce that it has become the fully first, with the first fully, there we go, licensed crypto exchange in El Salvador. Moreover, Binance is proving once again that it's serious about providing its customers with a safe and lawful trading environment. No, it's not that they're serious about providing something for their cut, like they want money. The more countries you expand into, the more money you're going to get. You, you as, as Binance can't be like, okay, guys, 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 we're, we're in five countries. We can't expand anymore. I don't want any more money. Stop it. I don't want any more money. I, I already have 25 houses. I, can't, I just can't. Just, I, I, just, I just don't want to, like, no, that, you're going to want to continue expanding. And as far as like a safe and lawful trading environment, do you expect Binance to be like, guys, it is a free for all. Do, what, do whatever you want on our platform. You can't trade over there. Come to us in El Salvador. You can do whatever you want over here. No, what, 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 why, is, why, is, why, is, why is the news always like this? The exchange claims that they are now registered in 18 different countries around the world. Binance's commitment to meeting the needs of customers all across the world means the company is actively expanding into new areas where it may, be operate, where it may operate legally. Yeah, they're doing it because everyone lost their gosh darn minds a couple of years ago. For those of you who weren't here two years ago, Binance has been the top cryptocurrency exchange for a long time now. Part of the problem is that other countries lying to us that they were not into crypto at some point announced that they wanted to start their own cryptocurrency exchange. Remember, we had many different countries, multiple countries who announced that they wanted to make their own national cryptocurrency exchange, whether it be through their central bank or some of them were also trying to do it through their local stock exchange. Hmm, who do you have to kick out of the way to make sure that that becomes popular? Binance. So multiple times, there were so many countries years ago who were like, Binance is the worst thing in the entire world. We don't even know where these people are. And Chang Peng Tao was like, I'm in a plane. I can go fly to you right now. Because Binance did not have a physical location because we still live in the 1920s and there's no such thing as the internet. All these countries told Binance that they were illegal, you're doing something terrible, so they had to literally, and I'm sure they did, I'm sure they bought property in every single country, they bought these offices, they had to set up an office, they had to get a stack of paperwork, which took years to get, and now for some reason every country is like, they're fully compliant and we love them. It's like... What, what, what is, it, is it, it's always, always something going on. Binance's new Latin American head, her name is Min Lin, has applauded the Salvadorian government's embrace of cryptocurrency, saying that it exemplifies the balance between safety and progress in the digital asset industry. I can't roll my, I, I can't roll my eyes anymore. Like I literally cannot roll my eyes anymore. So anyway, cool. Binance has expanded into El Salvador. Incredibly popular news. I assume we should be getting news any day now that Coinbase and Gemini and Kraken are going to also be expanding there as well. I wonder why it took so long. I would assume that the country was trying to make their own cryptocurrency exchange. They simply said to sign with Binance. It's a lot easier. I don't actually know. It's always something going on behind the scenes that we are not privy to, that we are not privileged enough to sit in a room to hear about. But cool. That's the... Binance continues to expand, and I, I thought it was—I thought it was way more than 18 countries. I thought it was at least like 30 at this point, because it feels like once a week, 
there's like, hey, look where we are now. You know, 52 weeks in a year. I just I just assumed we had gotten to that point. So cool. Good job, Binance. Um, we will be having most popular news of the day again at some point when they move into other country. I couldn't think of another country where they aren't right now. That's the Binance news. And yeah. Let's move on. Rightio, I do hope that you have all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. A very, very big thank you to all the, uh, just in general, just the nice messages on here or on Twitter that I keep seeing. Like, I, I, I don't know, once again, maybe it's something in the air. I'm seeing a lot more nicer messages and uh, just people being... Um, Nicer. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's something, you know, going around. But I do thank you. Really, I truly do thank you for all the support. You know how long I've been doing this channel? Do you understand what it means, like, for seven years to do something every single day of your life? Like, it's nuts. It's, I, I can tell you. It is insane. When I started this channel, I thought maybe I had, like, half a year. Like, that was it. To think I've been doing this for seven years every single day is completely insane. And the fact that people are still here supporting me and hitting like and like commenting and saying nice things, it does mean a lot. I thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.